one. Hey, how's everybody doing today? Welcome back for the first episode in 2024 of Coffee Talk with Brohawk. And I have the pleasure today of having our episode with Manu Duavetti. Manu, did I get that? Did I get the pronunciation right there? That was spot on, Mark. Yes. Excellent. Excellent. Well, Manu, thank you very much for, for being my guest. Um, I know you're with eTech, um, uh, the eTech organization, and um, you know, really appreciate you coming on and being a guest on this episode. Um, can you tell our viewers a little bit about yourself and what have you been up to these days? Oh, absolutely, Mark. I would love to, and thank you so much for having me here. I am Manu Devedi. I'm currently the director of eTech Insights. eTech Insight is an, a strategic AI and analytical division of eTech Global Services. Uh, okay. Well, uh, uh, my specialty is machine learning and generative AI. Basically, I have been in this. Uh, I've been into contact center industry for a very long time. In just last decade, I think I have, uh, uh, you know, been through almost every leadership role possible. And in last six years, I focused specifically on machine learning and AI and ensuring we are solving real world problem using those. I love it. Um, so you've seen the wave, you know, coming over the last, you know, six to 10 years. And, you know, you're just kind of, you just kind of surfing, surfing that wave right, right on in. Absolutely. So that's awesome. That's awesome. So Manu, what are some of the bi biggest misconceptions um, leaders have around implementing, um, you know, generative AI and in that, that from your from your perspective, and and how can how can leaders better understand the potential of generative AI? Mark, uh, I think one misconception that we are all you know kind of talking about is that uh, AI is going to replace jobs, but let's be very okay. honest. AI is not here to replace anything at all. It's going to be an enabler and augment agents and empower them to do more. I have uh, something that, you know, kind of uh, when I heard about it, it stuck me. And it was when Andrew Nick, like the father of AI, when you think about it that way, when Andrew Nick said that AI is the electricity of this century. Can we yes. imagine electricity today? No. Oh, and my I, gosh. Same thing. You know, and, and AI touches really every part of our life in some way, shape, or form. Um, and you know, I, I think that the analogy of it being the the electricity of our century, I, I think, is a great, a great analogy. Um, so, how how can leaders better understand you know the potential and in what it can really do for them? Uh, you know, yeah, I. Uh, I think, Mark, what ends up happening is uh, there are companies who understand AI and they want to implement it. And then there are companies you know, working towards it. Let's talk about the ones who want to implement it. So once what ends up happening is we are in a rush to implement AI so quickly to appear modern sometimes that we just end up buying technology to put it on our shelves. Instead yes. of having a game plan, identifying use cases where AI can help me. You know, just buying AI doesn't really solve any problems unless there is a problem to solve. So identifying very clear use cases, ensuring you are investing in the right AI for that use case is the start. I love it. Um, yeah, you, you you don't have to, organizations don't have to buy every new tool out there and, and every bell and whistle that, that accompanies that new tool. Dip your toe in a little bit, right? Exactly. Yeah. And I just being able to experiment or start small yeah. gives you mm -hmm. the power of ensuring that you can set up the right AI culture because yes. it gives you time to be able to spread that message, experiment, understand the things that are working out, the ones that you maybe you need to do it a little differently. And now mm -hmm. you're leaders through that education base, you know, kind of educational session with real world experience of AI. I love it. I love it. You know, one one of the, you know your your job function is eTech Insights, um, and one of the most fascinating uh, use cases that I find for AI is being able to listen and create 
data points um, from every single interaction that uh, customers are having with your organization. Um, and then that that becomes um, you know basically the spokes that go out to you know product or or other other parts of the organization that can make better data driven decisions uh, that weren't may not have been been there available. Um, so what steps what steps should contact centers be taking today uh, to kind of harness that energy? And start really preparing and and piloting generative AI. What's what's the you know I know you kind of uh, you kind of talked about dipping your toe in a little bit, but what's the right mindset that contact center leaders uh, should be should be focused on right now? That's a good question, and you know uh, I personally believe that contact centers are actually at the forefront of this technological advancement currently, because mm -hmm. you know when you think about it, large language models have evolved. And who better to understand and harness language learning than a contact center? Right? Yes. Uh, uh, as far as uh, starting, I would say the first thing is to establish that correct culture of ensuring that people understand the AI is going to empower and enable them to do more. When you think yes. about, let's talk about a real world problem, right? When you think about an agent, uh, let's say I'm taking uh, 20, 30 calls a day. Out of those, 15 have been around somebody's, uh, you know, just asking me to reset their password. Mm -hmm. okay. It's not enough for me as well. Or let's say I took 30 calls today and 15 of those have been around me hunting, going into different knowledge bases, going into different documents to understand what I do need to do. What are the troubleshooting steps? Both of these issues can be solved in a snap by generative AI. And now you have empowered agents to be able to have a co-pilot of sorts that's telling uh -huh. you what you need to do and you know doing that in seconds so that you don't waste your time. And at the same time, you don't waste customers' time, right? Have who nobody likes to be on phone more than five minutes, let's be honest. Yeah, we can get on and off as quick as we can. Exactly. as a customer <laughs> exactly. and i think that's the reason the one thing context the context center needs to start doing is understand how ai can help agents and decrease that agent effort one key metric that we have started you know uh, measuring at etech now is agent effort how effortful is it for an agent to be able to provide that resolution for your customer Yes. You know, because the knowledge availability is an issue. Is it because the right training is not there? Or maybe, um, you know, in fact, we are partnering with Jabra soon to even understand agents' auditory fatigue to ensure that we are able to empower them with the right tools to do this job. And I yes. think that's what needs to focus on. Ensure that AI is used for the right uh, use cases that can empower your, you know, uh, your population to do better and you know serve more and customers basically. Would would you say that you know one use case um may be to really streamline some behind the scenes processes? Oh, um, absolutely. You know, a lot of... uh, let's talk about one of our customers. Uh, they were facing a very unique problem, Mark. Uh, this is a large yeah. manufacturing customer, and their biggest problem is they have thousands of SKUs. Every SKU mm -hmm. has its own, you know, uh, warranty information, uh, product information. Uh, it has its own troubleshooting steps as well sometimes, or, you know, okay. its own products. Now for an agent to be on a call with another business who just ordered one of these and be able uh -huh. to talk and resolve those problems, they need to go into multiple knowledge bases to be able to do anything about it. Now mm -hmm. with assess all they have to do is click on the suggestion being provided by AI because AI is, you know, hearing that conversation and telling you, hey, they, they are asking about this SKU, this troubleshooting step, they should try this. That's it. I love it. I love it. So wait, do, do you think that um, companies and organizations need to put some guardrails around their AI usage because... Um, you know, there's, you know, some folks have have, have said, there's some in the industry will talk about, um, you know, the, the, the knowledge that you're getting out is only as good as the knowledge that you're putting in. Um, and so, you know, are, are there, are there guardrails that, um, that an organization should really 
be looking at um, as a check and balance, basically, for for how AI is functioning. Oh, absolutely. And uh, Mark, you're absolutely right. Uh, uh, no, no tool, any tool, basically, is as useful as the you know use case or as people using it, right? Yeah. Even when we talk about AI, uh, there are two things that every organization needs to keep in mind. One, you have to ensure that your knowledge architecture is right. The data architecture that is being fed into AI, or you know, the uh, what AI is referencing, needs to be right, needs to be structured, and you need to ensure that you eliminate things like bias, you know, any misinformation from those. Second, let's let's be honest, hallucination is a real problem. It's the big elephant in the room, right? Yes. But gotten around it by putting right guardrails. Now, in fact, there are semantic layers and even checking layers on top of AI where an answer or a response is actually checked by another layer of AI to ensure that's correct. And if it's not, it goes away. So there are solutions already in place that ensure that you have right guardrails and you are able to use AI safely. I As love it. That mind during implementation, instead of just implementing it, I think, you know, uh, the century is uh, will be of AI for sure. I love it. I love it. Um, so we, you talked a little bit about the how the agent role is is, is going to be evolving, not replaced. You know, humans, you know, you know, should never be replaced. You know, they'll just evolve into into other roles um, within the within the organization. Um, how important is it, do you think, to get the agents, get your frontline agents involved? with any AI initiative that you may have? This is one key thing that most of the organizations are currently missing. Decisions are right up top and they trickle down, but they stop somewhere at the mid manager level. Agents yep. just get to hear about it when it's being implemented. And that actually adds up to the panic. If yes. opposed to that, we would start from the beginning by educating and empowering agents with the right information so that they know that this is not a threat. I'll give you an example of eTech, for an example, right? When we started implementing this, we didn't tell people that, you know what, this is 100% correct. Everything that is coming out will be perfect. And, uh, you know, we will be using this to evaluate every call you take from now on, right? Mm -hmm. Or document more information that you need around performance. What we did was we ensured that agents are able to see it through webinars, and see the you know uh, see the steps that are being taken understand the current workflow and not only did it help us eliminate any panic mark but agents understood that this is being done to empower them and now they also understand that if i for an example uh, there is a very small uh, 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 you can say feature module in one of our product ql that just tells agent hey these are the things you need to focus on this is where you are currently if you do focus on these, you will be here as far as your nice. performance. And now, just with this module, agent knew I could earn more. And this is telling me how. So instead of I that, back, we actually made it about them. And that's the difference, basically. I I love that. Um, you know, the, anytime you can, you can show something, show a human what the benefit is to them and how this is going to um, create longevity and engagement for them. Um, you know, then fear of, of being replaced goes away. You know, that, that is so critical. Um, so what are some examples, uh, you know, if you have some uh, additional examples of um, how early adopters are already blending generative AI and human agents uh, today, uh, you know, what what are what results are, are people seeing? Oh, uh, uh, one key example that I think we uh, we have been talking about is agent assist or agent copilot. Uh, we are seeing okay. this immensely well for our customers, where uh, now agents are able to do much more yeah. and be able to handle much more customers as well because AI is there to help them. Even with routine tasks like customer verification, do you really need that first three minutes of the call for a human being to be there to just verify a customer? No. Yes. And I think agents have realized this now and they're happy. 
that when we get into the call, the customer is already verified. We have the right information. And the co-pilot is also telling me what to do to resolve it. So uh, these are some, you know, this is one basic example that we are seeing everywhere. We are also seeing things like voice bots, where now voice bots are empowered with generative AI capabilities. So the conversations are much more nuanced. So for an example, let's say you are calling, uh, you know, customer support uh, because you are facing an issue. Now the bots, instead of going through an IVR, bots are talking to you and ensuring you land to the right agent. That entire experience, think about it. I spent two minutes going through an IBR tree, selecting the right option. Okay, it's time to press eight, press, uh, time to press six. That all goes yeah. away. Yes, it becomes a lot more flat. Yes, absolutely. You know? um, oh, I, I, I think it's a great example. Yeah. Absolutely. And mm -hmm. each one of these uh, you know, uh, use cases are doing two key things for us. One, they are you know, reducing customer effort drastically and improving customer experience. Second, they are ensuring that agents are able to do much more than just validating customer or, you know, helping with password resets and things like this. Have Have you done any, any, um, any looking into what agent satisfaction or agent engagement rates are, um, you know, as a comparison between pre-AI implementation versus post-AI implementation. Um, you know, I would imagine that some, somebody that's involved in, in implementing a, a new tool or technology is going to be a little bit more satisfied, a little bit more engaged. Um, ha have you all found that? Oh, absolutely. In fact, Mark, uh, uh, during one of our recent implementation, we were worried that, you know, even after uh, doing it right, we will have agents who will not feel comfortable enough with it, right? And uh, uh, when we actually implemented it and went back to agents after two weeks, there were two key things that I heard from almost every agent. One, they said, I can take more sales call now. I am earning more. It's not replacing, but it has enabled me to actually be able to earn more. Second, every agent said that, okay, you know what? Now we see the power of AI where I don't have that are very monotonous in nature. I'm enjoying my work more. I'm using human empathy, human creativity, drive to provide solutions to customer instead of just answering the same question on 10 to 15 calls a day. That, that is amazing. That is absolutely amazing. Um, so where do you see contact centers leveraging uh, generative AI for personalization uh, oh, across absolutely. across all channels like chat or email? And, and what do you, you know, if you, if you have a crystal ball, what do you see the future really looking like? That's yeah. Especially about future, right? So uh, Mark, one thing that uh, we all have seen is that the white glove experience that we provide in customer service, right? Uh, be it any industry across the world, mm -hmm. uh, we provide that white glove experience, but it's, people service, where we serve multiple people with the exact yeah. same experience. The future is person service. We will be individualizing each one of these experiences. Until now, it was very difficult having millions of customers, you know, having their data and being able to customize this experience to them. Now AI has made that possible. You are able to ensure that when a customer calls you, you already understand what products they have, which one was yes. the reason they just bought and maybe they're calling for it. You are also mm -hmm. able to understand that, you know, for an example, let's take an example of an airlines company, right? Yeah. Let's say you book the ticket. Now, based on your customer data that is uh, being provided by you, the company understand exactly what you do every time you, you know, board your plane. And this time, if you forget, they're going to recommend you that, hey, you know what? Do you want to get this neck pillow? It's at 50% off today in the one of the <laughs> stores. Nice. Well, and, and, you know, with, I'm sure like with weather challenges and stuff, one of the things that AI can do is, is, um, you know, recommend, Hey, um, we, we know it's going to be un unseasonably cool or unseasonably hot, um, and actually generate a couple days out, um, you know, some, uh, some travel tips or some travel reminders, um, that aren't necessarily like advisories or alerts or anything like that, but more something for, for planning because, you know, who's got time to watch the weather, you know, wherever you're going to be. 
you know, these days. Uh, that, that's an amazing idea, Mark. Think about it. So let's say you are about to board a plane, it's two hours out, and you get an email, hey, you know what, Mark, today the roads are a little icy. We would recommend that you leave your house 30 minutes before whatever you were planning. And maybe yes. I checked it, but now I know. Yeah, that's, yes. that's a, in fact, there are some examples very close to real world that we are seeing where AI is actually making this different. For an example, you know, as we were talking about, you know, being in speech analytics and being able to understand customers' conversation from agent and customer side, we are seeing mm -hmm. that we are able to understand customers better. We understand how they react to specific offers, offers you make. We also understand if they would prefer to self-service or if they would prefer to talk to someone. And yes. this is this is kind of ensuring that now that we have this better understanding of our customers, we're able to customize those experiences for them and, you know, improve CX. In the end, it's all about improving that CX. You know, with, with CX, I mean, CX is really about relationships. And what AI is really allowing an organization to do is get out of that, having that transactional relationship with their customer and, um, and like you said before, a more personalized relationship with their customer. The key being relationship. And you, know, you want to, you're going to want to buy as a consumer, you're going to want to buy from people that you trust and, and you have confidence in, um, and you're going to continue to buy. So, uh, I, I love the idea of, of the personalization, uh, you know, aspect of, of what AI really brings to the table for us. Oh, absolutely. And I think uh, talking about future 10 years down the line, Mark, you and I, we will see this happening. Every interaction will be completely personalized. I love it. I love it. So what, you know, I, I, I like to have these uh, these conversations really conversational. Um, you know, what questions can, can I answer for you? Oh, th thank you so much, Mark. In fact, I did have a question. Uh, you know, I've been uh, I've been an audience of your podcast, and sometimes I feel like you know we would love as an audience to know more about you. And one of yeah. the questions that I have is considering your expertise currently in this you know industry and you know the vast experience that you carry. What is one lesson that you would like to give your audience today about contact centers in twenty twenty four? Um. Number one lesson, don't be afraid to try. Step out of your box and look at new technologies, look at new tools that are out there in the industry and reimagine how things could be for your contact center, for your organization um, that, that would make things better within your four wall, your virtual four walls. Um, What's that term? Fail forward. Uh, you know, yes. I, I think that's that's the number one um, thing that that I would um, that I would encourage a lot of um, a lot of viewers and a lot of organizations to to really look at. But it's a calculated fail, as opposed to hey, I'm all in. I'm going. I'm I'm dump. I'm, I'm going to jump in off the off the deep end. No, you know, like we were talking about before, dip your toes in um, where you're comfortable, but be uncomfortable about being comfortable because um, you don't know what's going to happen um, as a result. And you may have some incredible learnings as an organization that you never imagined were out there. So be okay with, with failing forward. Um, and when you don't fail, uh, it's a win-win for everybody. That's, those are amazing words, Mark. Yes, absolutely. It's all about the continuous momentum. As long as you are feeling for you are still reaching something. Absolutely. So. Yes, yes. Um, you know, the, um, you know, any other questions? Uh, uh, when uh, I do have actually one more question uh, since we are talking about it. So, uh, uh, you know, I am, the technological landscape has shifted so drastically, you know, and uh -huh. in these few years that, uh, uh, you know, people who are at forefront of this, like yourself, you know, who have seen this industry shift and change, um, you know, what as 
one of those people what are some specific leadership traits that you would like to you know uh, share with current contact central leaders so that they can be better prepared for 2030 basically you know when, when i know definitely when i started in the contact center industry uh the 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 most coolest technology that was out there uh, at that time and i'm talking like 34 years ago um, was, hey, we, we're going to implement an IVR. And IVRs were going to take over the world. And and it was we weren't going to have to be better leaders because we wouldn't have agents in, in the contact center. And now we have more agents than ever. Um, and we have five generations um, of employees working within an organization. So the one leadership trait that I think is is going to be so critical is to understand how to communicate across generations, because how people are receiving information um, may not be exactly the same. Um, yeah, and this may be based on their intrinsic or ed- extrinsic motivators. Uh, it may be their lens um, that they view the world through. Um, but being able to, as a leader, adapt your communication style to those who are on your team or within your organization, so that you can you can create that stronger uh, that stronger internal network of people that are really bought into your message. Uh, I think that's going to be the most critical leadership trait um, going into twenty thirty. Um, it goes back to don't be that transactional boss be that be that relationship focused boss absolutely i think relationship focused boss are will be the one who ends up winning in 2030 actually yes it, it's funny i i interviewed for a uh, uh for a job you know 15 15 16 years ago and uh the last question i asked the uh, uh, folks that were interviewing me was um are you looking for a leader or a manager? Because if you're looking for a manager, I'm the wrong person for that. Uh, If you're looking for someone who's going to come in and lead, um, then, you know, hopefully we'll see you within a month. And I ended up getting the job, you know, and I don't know if it was necessarily because of that, but it was one of those, it was one of those questions that I think a lot of, um, at that time, a lot of leaders, senior leaders weren't necessarily focused on. You know, do I want somebody to count beans or do I want somebody to make sense of the beans? Oh, uh, and so to speak. Mark, this is so true. In fact, this is one thing that I love, uh, you know, kind of learned after uh, getting to ETEC was the servant leadership. You know, mm-hmm. the entire ethos of serving your people, not being a yes. boss. And, uh, you know, I see this every day when I walk in. Uh, when the technology landscape started shifting, ETEC had a quality division that was listening to calls. People who were every day just listening to calls instead of, you know, doing like any other company would, just, you know, uh, cutting the cost and hiring better skilled people, they invested in ensuring that everybody grows to the next level. Today, when yes. I look outside this floor, mm-hmm. out of everybody that I see, Half of them are the people who actually came from that time and they have evolved themselves into this new role. They are more skilled, they are earning more, and eTech as a company improved lives of individuals. And I think there is a not a better example of how you can serve as a leader and not just be a boss. Yeah. I, I love that. When when as a as a leader, you can have such a positive impact on people's lives, their livelihood, their families. Um, that I mean, that's that's the holy grail as far as I'm concerned, uh, as a leader, you know. Um, well, hey, we've got Manu, we've gotten to the point that I call the speed round. Are you ready for this? Okay, all right, I'm ready. Let's go ahead. Excellent, excellent. So, you've had a very, uh, um, a very long and successful career uh, up to this point, and you have many, many, many years ahead of you, uh, as well. So at this stage in your career, um, how would you answer answer this question? I wish I could go back in time and tell my younger self blank. Um, and how would this have helped you in your career? 
that's that's a good question market you know my friends get very annoyed uh, when we are you know uh, playing some games and you know uh, it comes to the time when we go as past young self and i end up telling them you know what i don't really have anything because uh, uh, because uh, i believe uh, that everything that i have achieved and reached here today till today uh, has been because of how it was planned how it was you know uh, uh, from the higher power and ensured that you know i i have that faith to ensure that it was done right for me as like long as i keep giving that 100% every day wake up give my 100% but there is one thing that i wish i knew uh, uh, 12 years down the line and uh, that was try to blur the boundaries between hobbies and work a little more do uh, what you enjoy more and maybe you will find exactly what you enjoy and you can work on it for an example yes. there i am i love tech i love data and i'm doing exactly this thing that i love every day i love it what what's the saying when when you when you're doing something you love you never work a day in your life yes yeah. you know, that's awesome that's awesome so what fact about you would people be surprised to learn about you uh, i think uh, not many people know but i started to dabble uh, in uh, uh, you know preparing food uh, somewhere or pre during the covid era and i okay. love it come on hobby yeah, i love, you know cook for my family for you know for my wife for my friends invite them over and especially you know the traditional indian food but done in uh -huh. a way that it is modernized a little so that the younger generation likes it as well my niece is nephew they love to eat it so i think you know that's one hobby that people don't really know about me <laughs> oh i love it i'm going to have to i'm, I'm going to you know if i ever get over to india um uh, i'm going to have to take a sample oh yes sir yes <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome so for a, after a stressful day uh what is your go to tactic for unwinding i uh, there have been multiple throughout the years right i have loved walking yeah. reading a lot i uh, so uh, i started reading very young because my mom was uh, my mom used to work in a library so every time after school we will go to her because uh, her uh, work ended two hours of us after my school so for okay. two hours we was Her and then we will all go together home, right? So I've been reading since I was like eleven, twelve. So that has been very close to my heart. Recently, I think what gives me the most joy is spending time with my family. Basically, just going home, spending time with them, getting to talk to them. You know, knowing how they have been doing. It has been the best stress buster, actually. It's awesome. That's awesome. So, Manu, if someone wants to pick your brain about. Um, any of the things that we've talked about um some of the initiatives that you're working on at, at etac um you know how um how the work that that you're doing can actually help other organizations um what conferences or events are you are, are you are you planning on attending or generally how can someone pick your brain for for a few minutes Oh, uh, 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 if you ever want to contact me, you can always email me at manu at etechtexas dot com. That is M A N U at etechtexas dot com. We are currently at the CCW conference. We will be there again in uh, Vegas. Feel free to drop by and you know stop by at our booth. We would love to talk to you. You can always come to the uh, etech website. That is etech global services etechgs dot com and just fill an inquiry and I would love to get in touch with you. Or you can always find me on LinkedIn. Excellent. Hey, and if somebody wants me to do a uh, do a, a a soft introduction with you, I would be more than happy to go ahead and do that as well. So, excellent. Manu, thank you very much for being for being a guest on this episode. I have a feeling we could probably talk for hours on on some of these topics, uh, and I do hope that that we get the opportunity to do that in person at some point in time over the years. Um, uh, with that, um, you know, if you like the content here, um, please go ahead and 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 like this episode, share this episode with uh, with uh, your friends, families, peers. You know anybody that you think might be interested in in learning more about AI uh, and, uh, and and the work that's being done in this space. Uh, you know, Manu, 
thank you very much. I'm I'm very honored to have you on today and I look forward to talking with you again soon. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me, Mark. I, I, I have enjoyed our conversation thoroughly. It felt more like a discussion between friends. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you very much. And have a great day now. Yes.